from a fat audience as big as this one. I was quite nervous, as I am now. That was even worse, because this was my first talk in English, and as you have probably realized by now, English is not my first language. So I was really on the verge of a nervous breakdown when one of my best friends approached me and told me, don't you worry. Just start with hello, finish with thank you, and everything will be all right. <laughs> I asked him, how can you be so sure that everything will be all right? And he told me, you see, because no one cares. <laughs> that day, I realized two things. First, that no one will ever care about what I have to say unless I'm able to engage them with my idea. And the second, that sometimes, if you follow some simple rules, everything will be all right. At some other moment, someone that I admire put himself in front of an even larger audience than this one, with just a phrase on a big screen on his back. And in that phrase, you could read, think different. That was a sentence, a slogan, that my teenage mind quickly transformed into break the rules. And with that spirit, today, I will be breaking the rule of starting with hello, and I will start with thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for being here today. Thank you very much for attending this talk. It means a lot to me, because even if you don't realize it, you are giving me one of the most important things that you have, one of the, your most valuable assets which is your time. I am really grateful for that, and I hope that someday I will be able to pay back this loan to you with some of my own time. I know that some of you might be thinking, pay me with time? Hmm. They say that time is money. Show me the money. <laughs> I disagree, OK? I'm not paying you. Time is not money. You cannot put money in a van. You cannot earn more money, but you can earn more money, but you cannot earn more time. You cannot give time to someone else. And as I hope that you will see in this talk sometimes, more time means less money. And that's why at some moment I will advise you to go home and take your report with you. OK, you might be thinking about who are you? And now I realize that after having talked for three minutes, I haven't introduced myself. So let's do it in the traditional support group way. Hello, I'm Rafael, and I'm workaholic. I've been recovering for quite a while now, and I'm here today to share with you some of my findings. I've been a developer for as long as I can remember. It all started in my job as a hobby that I loved, and then I thought that if I can work doing what I love, it would be like never doing a day's work in my life. Oh man, I was so wrong. <laughs> <sighs> During my first job, as a developer, I, end, I, I hit the field with a, quite a big imposter syndrome, OK? I thought that all those years working on my own projects were not enough, that me, a hobbyist, turned into a professional, was not really worth it. I was an imposter. Everyone will know that I was not at the level of my other co-workers. They will find out, and they will fire me. So I tried to overcompensate by working long hours every single day. This is a picture of me, as seen by my co-workers of that time. I must say that it's pretty accurate, OK? I was always the first one arriving to the office in the morning, and the last, last one living in the evenings. I was working a lot every single day, working long hours for months, during Saturdays and during Sundays. During bank holidays, I never took a day off. And I found, after several months of working really hard, that if you do what you love for a living, 20 hours per day, you will end up loving it a little bit less. <laughs> and I quit. So let's stop for a moment and analyze my case. I was working long hours every day just to try to hide an underlying problem, but no one noticed. They thought that I was an engaged employee. I got really amazing good reviews and bonuses. Everyone was astonished with my engagement, with my performance, and how committed I was. They all thought, that I was engaged, but I was just a workaholic. And being a workaholic is not the same as being an engaged employee. Being a workaholic is really bad. I know that sometimes we joke about workaholism, that we misuse the term, and that sometimes we just play with the concept. So let's make things clear. Being a workaholic is as bad as being an alcoholic. 
In fact, work addiction shares some of its features to other addictions, like displaying excessive behaviors and disregarding other significant domains in life. This is critical. We workaholics tend to put apart many th important things in life just to be able to work a little bit more. During my peak time as a workaholic, I end up weighing 120 kilos because of not exercising. I drift apart from my friends because I had no social life and I even lost my long time partner because I was never home. Now, let me tell you a little secret, okay? And you have probably found out by now because all these little logos in the slides, I work for Badoo. Badoo is the largest social discovery network in the world. Thanks to that, many years after, I have learned that sometimes when you work a lot and you never go home, your significant other will get bored and will end up social discovering someone else. <laughs> It probably also helped that I stink a bit. But <laughs> the worst thing about it all is that I was not enjoying it. Workaholic tendencies may be energized by high personalized standards as self-imposed goals and not by enjoyment of work. When workaholics fail to meet their own expectations, they may feel incompetent. So even having worked as hard as I have ever worked in my life, I was not able to meet my own expectations, and I, felt, I felt really incompetent. Which, if you remember, my imposter syndrome made things even worse, dragging me to a vicious cycle. And if I tell you that at every moment I knew that I was working way too much, I have all the signs in my environment telling me that I was working too much, then you will probably ask me, why didn't you stop? And that's a really, really good question with a very simple answer. I didn't stop because I was not able to stop. I couldn't help but working non-stop. Stopping was the problem. And this has been proven to be one of the main differences between engaged employees and people who, like me, have a problem. When you are doing any kind of activity, there are two main reasons why you might want to stop. The first one, because you are not enjoying it any longer. The second one, because you think that you have done enough. These are known as stop rules. I mean, the first one, the enjoyment stop rule, and the second one, the enough stop rule. So for instance, let's say that you love chocolate. Everyone loves chocolate, right? And you have access to an unlimited amount of chocolate. Then you will start eating it, and you will stop after a while, when it's no longer enjoyable, using an enjoyment stop rule. You won't keep on eating it until you think that you have reached your chocolate eating goal of the day or month of the quarter or whatever. <laughs> which if you are a 10 years old, it might be well eating the whole lot, right? It's been proven that workaholic employees work like this 10 years old boy. They work until they think that they have done enough, that they have put enough effort into the work, trying to reach some of their own goals that are basically unreachable. You cannot eat the whole lot of chocolate, right? On the other hand, people that are engaged and motivated enjoy their work, enjoy what they're doing, they find it fun, and they stop working when it's no longer fun. So we can say that workaholic use a enough stop rule to stop working, and engaged employees use the enjoyment stop rule. And for you, as leaders, it's really important to be able to tell whether one rule is being used or the other, because you want people who are really motivated of what they're doing. You don't want people who, like me, work a lot, get excellent results, but quit after three months, right? You might be this boss. You might be the one who said, well, I'm being paid to make sure that everyone works hard. I want everyone working hard for me. My job is work hard. Well, you are a terrible boss. And you need to learn a few things. Workaholic employees experience more interpersonal conflict at work. They are less satisfied with their jobs. They report more work home interference. They have poorer social relationship outside work than other employees. They experience low life satisfaction and they have high level of job strain and health complaints. And they work hard, that's true, but they work hard in response to feelings of low self-worth and insecurity and because they must do so. Not working evokes distress and negative emotions as irritability, anxiety, shame, and guilt. You will agree with me that this is a bad type of working hard. 
And you will soon regret if you allow this. If you don't prevent this, why? Because you will need to spend a lot of time and money, a lot of resources finding a replacement when your guy or girl burns out and quit. And then, while you are looking for a good replacement, you will find that you need to have all your workforce coping with the extra workload, and they will also get burned. And once you find someone that is good enough, you will need to provide training and support and more time. And all this because you were not able to prevent that. So although it's really difficult to estimate the real cost of employee turnover, it's been calculated to be around 1.5 times the annual salary of the position in question. And this doesn't even take into account the loss of profit that you might have because you might be losing someone that is working in really key projects for your company and you might have to delay these projects because of that. So by allowing someone to work long hours every single day that like I did up till the moment that he or she is exhausted and burnt out and quit his job, you might be creating a real important finance problem to your company just to try to squeeze a little bit more time. So in this context, I will agree with you that time is money. Specifically, more time is less money. So you might be wondering now, so what can I do? Because I cannot just go to the employee and tell him to stop working. He will just panic. It will be like waking up a sleepwalker, right? He will start feeling all these bad emotions and, and panic and probably collapse or something. Don't you worry. That won't happen. When I quit that first job, I was lucky enough to land a new one, a managerial position in a really, really good company. There, after a while, showing the same kind of behaviors that led me to burn out and quit my previous job, my then manager came to me and asked to have a really serious conversation. She was trying to tell me that I had a problem, that working so much was a real issue, and that was not good for me, nor for the company. Of course, at that moment, I thought that I don't have any problem. I disagree. So she did something wonderful. She dared me to just switch off my mobile phone next Saturday, just for a while. And I thought, easy peasy, I can do that. So and then following Saturday, while I was walking in the park, I remember that conversation, pick up my phone, switch it off, put it in my pocket, and I thought, this is, this is terrible. <laughs> I was feeling all kind of withdrawal symptoms, like phantom vibrations in my pocket. It was like a silence call. Pick me up, check your email, check your email. So after a whole Saturday feeling anxious and fidgety, I recognized that I had a problem. I accepted it. And acceptance is the first step to face an addiction, right? So after I accept that I had a problem, I was able to start dealing with that. So I started having more weekends of the daily talks, then I was able to establish better boundaries between my work life and my personal life. And finally, I was able to start using an enjoyment store rule to decide when to call it a day. And today, I'm no longer a workaholic. <laughs> and this was just thanks to a really great manager who was brave enough to come to me and have this serious conversation. So try to be that great manager. And more important, try to create an environment where you don't promote workaholism. And to do that, you just need to follow two simple rules and everything will be all right. The first one, do not compliment people who work long hours. Do not use long hours as an argument to justify a promotion or a salary raise. In fact, if you need to promote or give a salary raise to a suspected workaholic, make sure that you make clear that this salary raise is despite of working long hours and not because of that. And take advantage of that conversation to set, to set goals about working hours and follow up on your next one-on-ones. And even more important, second, be a leader. Be the one who shows the way. Be the one who leads by example. Do not work long hours. Work hard, but stop when it's no longer enjoyable. Go home and let everyone aware that you are going home, that it's time to stop working, that you are doing that, and you expect the same from everyone. In just one phrase, let's go home and take your report with you. Thank you very much.